As long as men have taken to the skies to fight to the death, pilots and crews have felt the calling to add custom identification art to the front of their aircraft. Some of them did this for luck, others to remember their women back home, and still others to put fear into the heart of the enemy. In this new series, Nose Art Stories, we will look at notable, unique, and famous nose art from World War II aircraft and attempt to bring these beautiful planes back to life and tell their courageous, incredible, and sometimes tragic tales to help remember the brave men from the greatest generation. Welcome to my new series, Nose Art Stories by TJ3 History. In this brand new series, I will be selecting five nose art designs that I think were incredibly unique, funny, or memorable. I will then be telling the short story of each plane in an effort to respect the memory of these brave airmen. I hope you enjoy. To start off this video, we will look at a P-47 Thunderbolt from the 492nd Fighter Squadron flown by Captain Thompson D. Litchfield. This Razorback P-47 would be dubbed the Blonde Angel likely after his lady back home. This design is particularly unique due to the female face and flowing blonde hair featured so prominently on the side of the fighter. This American fighter was one of the many Thunderbolts that flew over Europe. Also known as the Jug for its wide shape, this aircraft was an extremely efficient ground attack plane and one of the workhorses of the U.S. Army Air Force due to its ability to take a great deal of damage and still make it back home. While flying the Blonde Angel, he successfully participated in multiple combat missions, primarily hitting industrial and military targets on the ground. Litchfield would be shot down by German flak in May of 1944, but would successfully bail out of his aircraft and was then taken as a prisoner of war. He would survive in German captivity and go on to own a business after the conflict. But the Blonde Angel would obviously be lost in this final mission. At number four is an American P-51 Mustang flown by First Lieutenant Moon Mullins of the 20th Fighter Group. He had one of the more recognizable pieces of art on his fighter in the bare female flying in the form of an angel, which would come to be known as Little Lady. Despite him having no notable combat record or great story behind his name, this piece of nose art has become one of the more popular pieces on Mustangs in the conflict. In this war, he is credited with taking down just one Focke-Wulf 190 in a dogfight over Europe. This kill is something worth mentioning, however, because it was one of the more advanced Focke-Wulf fighters that was known for being a worthy adversary among Allied pilots. Typically, these were a more difficult opponent for the Mustangs than the common BF-109. Unfortunately, however, this dogfight would be one of the last combat missions for Lieutenant Mullins and Little Lady. Not too long after this, he was killed in a training accident in October of 1944 when he crashed into the North Sea. Little Lady and Lieutenant Mullins would be lost to the depths in this incident. Number three is another Mustang flown by Major Richard A. Hewitt of the 78th Fighter Group. Hewitt would be credited with 4.3 kills in the Second World War, however most of these would come in the P-47 before the group switched to the Mustang. But when they did switch, he would paint his Mustang with one of the most memorable pieces of nose art in their fighter squadron. Richard, going by the nickname Dick, would dub his P-51 Big Dick. This title, along with a pair of craps die, was painted onto the side of his Mustang, which he flew in 10 combat missions before the war's end. And although Hewitt would not actually claim any victories in the air while flying his Mustang, he would successfully attack multiple aircraft on the ground, destroying a total of four grounded targets by the time his tour of duty ended. In addition to this solid tally of enemy damage caused, he would claim one of the best nose art designs of his fighter group, helping him be remembered for more than just his combat record alone. He would finish the war just shy of becoming an ace, and both he and his P-51 would survive. After the conflict, the Mustang would eventually end up being given to the Italian Air Force years later. Number two is our first bomber and twin-engine aircraft on the list, as we will see a famous B-25 Mitchell. This bomber actually lacks an impressive combat record, as it was used primarily as a training plane in the States but that doesn't change the fact that it has some absolutely fantastic nose art. 
In the Mood was a B-25 that was delivered to Turner Field in Georgia for pilot training in 1944. From this point until the end of the war, she would be used to teach pilots to fly. She served in this role well and was a great aircraft for the U.S. Army Air Corps until her retirement in 1958, where she was put into storage. Fortunately, however, this would not be the end of the road for her. Decades later, at an aviation festival in 1992, after some restoration efforts, she would actually be one of the first B-25 Mitchells since World War II to take off from an actual aircraft carrier, mimicking the famous Doolittle raid on Japan in 1942. She is now on display at the National Museum of World War II Aviation in Colorado Springs. The final aircraft in this episode is another bomber, but this time one of the rugged B-17s of the 91st Bomb Group, known as Shu 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 Baby. This fortress was named after a song of the same name by the popular music group The Andrews Sisters. Shoo, 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 baby. Bye, 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 baby. It was actually originally named Shoo Shoo Baby, but a third shoe was added when they had a change of pilot in 1944 after the original flyer's tour of duty ended. In a showcase of just how risky these bombing raids were, Shoo 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 Baby lasted only three months in the front before she would take off for her final mission on May 29th of 1944. She was listed as missing in action during this bombing raid on a Fokowolf factory in Poland. During this mission, she suffered mechanical problems and lost two engines over Germany. However, her crew was able to release their bombs on their target, but they were then forced to make an emergency decision. Recognizing that they could not make it all the way back home, they then changed course to land in neutral Sweden. In accordance to their neutrality agreement, Sweden, upon receiving the aircraft and the crew, returned all of the crew members from the B-17 to the United States, understanding that they were not allowed to fight again and that Sweden would be allowed to keep the B-17s. Thus, Shu 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 Baby would actually enter civilian service after the war since it was owned by Sweden. It would join Scandinavian Airlines and would be a reliable airliner in their fleet. But in 1972, Stephen Birdsall, a noted military aviation historian, tracked down the bomber and made sure that it was donated back to the United States Air Force. And after a 10-year restoration process, it was completely restored and put on permanent display. It is expected to be moved to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. in the near future. I will be doing plenty more episodes on many more aircraft. So, if you have a particular nose art piece that you think I should cover, please make sure to comment it below. I hope you enjoyed this new video from my nose art series. If you want to support my content, please check out the fan store here and make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any new suggestions for new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.